Here's, here's, the, here's the true story of, uh, of that promotion and how that song came about. Uh, there, uh, this guy, uh, Jimmy his name was uh, Pic yeah, Jimmy Webb, uh, this guy Picard, who's like a member of the famous like Picard Adventurous family, the you know the underwater explorer and all mm -hmm. that stuff. He's in that family, but his uh, passion was uh, hot air ballooning, and uh, he came to the station one day and and said, uh, you know, I have this hot air balloon, and uh, he he wanted to. Boost you know something with a station so can, can we promote this in some way mm -hmm. and at the time there were less than a hundred hot air balloon pilots licensed pilots in the country there was a lot of hot air but not many hot well, air balloons. well that's why he came to Cayman yeah. he, he, he was looking for a source of fuel right okay. <laughs> that we'd had heard we'd heard that story yeah so well you're confirming okay, you got that, that part okay, okay. so anyway the short version of the story is uh, uh, Jerry Jolstad uh, who knew I was a pilot says can you fly a hot air balloon and I says does it go up? And Jerry was the general manager. He was the general the manager. Boss the boss. The bear, the as we affectionately called him. Okay. Uh, yeah, and I said, uh, yeah, I, I can fly it. I had no idea. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so he said, okay, well, you meet Mr. Picard. And so we got to talking, and, uh, and, and he uh, uh, set up this balloon promotion for us. And there was a new uh, where I was going to fly this hot air balloon and take uh, listeners for a ride in it and, and, and stuff like that. And they hooked it up um, on a tether. <laughs> so it, <laughs> It wouldn't get away. Okay. Um, and it was a it un national? Uncle Henry's uh, Hot Dogs or something there across from the Orange Show. Uh, yeah. I don't remember the name of it, but it was a new fast food hot dog stand. Mm -hmm. So the sales guys got together and says, hey, you know, you give us some money and we'll send William F. Williams out here with this balloon and take people up in the sky. You make a lot of money and we'll have a lot of fun. So, uh, so that was how the deal was set up. They took me out in the desert for, oh, I don't know, a month and taught me how to fly the balloon, which was... An adventure in Did you get overtime for that? <laughs> oh, sure. You know, just like we got overtime for the walk back and forth yeah. and, and, and so on and so on. <laughs> yeah, your overtime was, if you don't do this promotion, you're going to be fired over time. Yes, <laughs> uh, over a very short period of time. Yeah. <laughs> so, I, so I hooked this thing up on a tether and uh, was taking kids up in, in, in a balloon. And Jimmy Webb, uh, who I had just met previously, uh, he was going to Valley College at the time, and he was an inspiring songwriter, and a guy named Mike Riley who had been driving us nuts at the station saying, uh, you've got to meet Jimmy Webb, and, uh, you know, he's got this record, and da-da-da. Uh, you know, and, you know, we used to get that, like, every, every 20 minutes, so it's like, yeah, okay. So it took me literally months to meet Jimmy, and the first time I met him, went over to Valley College and sat down, and I said, <laughs> you know, rather haughtily, so we were the Cayman, of course, I said, okay, play me a tune. So he said, okay, play me by the time I get to Phoenix. Oh, first wow. Song, first song, sat down at the key keyboard and played it. <laughs> I said, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you got anything else? So he played me about 40 other tunes of equal caliber. I mean, it was astounding. He was 18 yeah. or 19 years old at the time. Wow. So cutting back to the hot air balloon. So Jimmy came by that night uh, while I was flying the balloon. It was at night, and it was, it was amazing what this balloon looks like at night when you, when you torch it off in the sky. This is huge incandescent ball up there. So I took Jimmy up, and we were hanging up, uh, around at the top. I think we were on a 700 tether, something like that. And uh, he, poet that he is, he says, I'm inspired. This is beautiful. He said, I have to write a song about this. I said, well, I'm writing a screenplay about hot air balloons, and uh, you can write the title tune. And he says, oh, OK, I'd love to do that. So uh, he said, what's the title of the movie? I said, I don't know. And so he says, that's a strange title. I don't want to write that. So <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, a few weeks later, I was up in the middle of the night working on the screenplay. And the title just came to me. It was up, up, and away. I thought, oh, great, great idea. So I called Jimmy, who was living at Johnny Rivers' house at the time. Now, see, this is what we didn't know. You came up with the title of Up, yeah, Up, and Away. Yeah, and uh, then Jimmy wrote the wrote, song. Wrote the song. Oh, yeah. OK. So I called him at Johnny's house, because Every jock who got to pick his own records had Johnny's home phone number in those days. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I meant Johnny, hey, yeah, oh yeah, the check's in the mail. Uh, I'm kidding. Yeah, he's kidding. Uh, sure. So, uh, so I called, called him up, and he, it's at 3 o'clock in the morning, and he, and he wakes up, and I said, I got the title for the song for you, and he says, what? And I says, up, up, and away, and there's this long pause on the other end of the phone. He says, what? And I says, up, up, and away. And he says, I'll never forget. I have to leave, put a bleep in here. He said, that is the stupidest bleeping title I have ever heard. <laughs> he said, I, I can't write a song about that. I says, good night, hung up. So the next day, he came out to uh, call me and says, I'll meet you at Valley College at like, you know, 4 o'clock in the afternoon. So we went over there and met, and I sat down on the, and you, you probably know this about Jimmy's songs by now. As somebody, uh, Lou Adler, great record producer, once 
describe Jimmy as the king of the wrist slasher songwriters because they're all like, oh, my heart is broken, it's your fault, and I hope you die because I'm dying. Yeah. I mean, that's sort of the Jimmy Webb mm -hmm. like genre in a, in a nutshell. So I told Jimmy, I said, look, this is a, this is a happy song. <laughs> this has a happy ending. You know, this is basically like a dumb movie. It's a, it's a hot air balloon version of, of Beach Blanket Bingo. You know, it's set in Palm Springs with a, Annette Funicello and that crowd. And at the end, they're all happy, so it's going to be a happy song. And I gave him, I don't know, two or three words. I said, you know, these, these words kind of go in there. And he says, okay, uh, I'll see what I can do. So Riley and I, Mike Riley and I said, okay, we're going to cross the street to Taco Bell, get some tacos, uh, we'll be back. See, I didn't know tacos were involved in this story. Tacos is yes. part of the story. Listen, wow, Mexican okay. food, man. This is <laughs> this is a. Tell you, filled the balloon. This is a very. <laughs> it's hey, coming together now. <laughs> Put that down. Morning drive. You know. This makes sense. Uh, so I, we we came back, and the legend is that that we were gone 22 minutes. It could, it, you know, it, it was in the neighborhood. But the legend is 22 minutes. We came back. Jimmy says, uh, "What do you think?" Wait, he wrote the song in 22 minutes. In 22 minutes. minutes. Wow. And the lyrics and the music? The whole thing. The lyrics, too. The lyrics, the music, the whole thing.